I've shown you how to make three different sorting visualizers here on YouTube. First one is very basic, but it does have sound. So still kind of special. The second one is more complex. It adds smooth animation between the sorted items, a bit of a 3D effect, and the sound as well. The third one doesn't have sound, but it does look like this. So I'd say it compensates for that. Now, all these visualizers show the same algorithm, bubble sort, which I also coded naked after swimming in ice, by the way. But anyway, some of you asked to see other sorting algorithms. So today I'll take those three code bases and extend them with insertion sort and quick sort. And since this is my last video of the year, and this was the year large language models became useful, I'll use ChatGPT to see how it sorts through the existing code. Get it? Because we're sorting. No, no, no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. I'm going to take the codes from my website. Um, they are here. And adding them here in Visual Studio Code. So they are all three different animations. And I also have them open here at the top. Let's start with the first one. And this is bubble sort. I've muted it so that I can talk on top of the animation. And you can kind of see the behavior where the items are bubbling up towards the right side here. When coding this, I pointed out that I extracted this bubble sort function. And it's pretty much the standard implementation but these swaps here are being collected. So the changes that are made in the, in the array when sorting them are recorded. And then these are being sent to the animation sequence. So let's see if ChatGPT can implement insertion sort using this same style. Can you implement insertion sort in this style? And I'm going to paste my bubble sort implementation. And it's doing something. Let me just take the code from here. This is the function that it recommends and replace it and see if it works. So I'm going to keep both copies here, bubble sort below, insertion sort here on the top. And where we call bubble sort, I'm going to replace it with insertion sort. And hopefully it did something amazing. And refreshing here and play. This actually works. Mm, kind of. The idea of insertion sort is that you put each new element in the already sorted list that is being collected on the left here. So that is fine. It's, it's definitely happening. The list is gradually getting sorted from the left to right here. And the new item is being moved to its location there. It's inserted in the correct location. But um, it's a little strange that it's doing all those swaps and somehow bubbling it down, uh, down there. Let's have a quick look on Wikipedia and maybe some um, pseudocodes here. Okay, 
Yeah, I think there are different implementations and all are considered insertion sorts. So here it looks like there is a swap happening while it's not in the right place. And here the swap is happening at the end or something like that. Now in the code, let's have a look how ChatGPT implemented insertion sort. So looping through the array one by one and while the current index is still greater than zero and we are at an element that is smaller than the one on, on the left, the swaps are recorded. So it, it is, it's correct pretty much. Let's also see what it had to say about this. So not much, but it did recognize here that the swaps are keeping, uh, being kept track of. So yeah, very, very good job. Let's see now how it works with this more complex sorting visualizer. It's probably going to be just as good because here, um, it's the same idea really. Those swaps are being recorded and then they are reproduced in a different way. But here the items are also shown to be compared if they don't need to be swapped. So like that when they are bouncing uh, together, maybe here it happens again. No, it didn't. At the end it will happen. But uh, when this item is smaller than this, so they jump like that. So it's a little bit extra thing. We don't record just uh, swaps, but we also we record the moves. So some moves are swaps and some moves are not swaps. They are just comparisons. Let's copy this one and see if it can do it. Can you implement insertion sort in this style? It already recognized here that it's a moves array this time. And um, let's see what happens. I'm gonna put it here above bubble sort and replace here bubble sort with insertion sort. Let's refresh and mm. yes. It works pretty well, but I think it's something off with this, with this bouncing. I think it's, uh, it's incorrect. Let's see how, how it's happening. I mean, there's no reason why this element would bounce as well. Let's have a look at the code. So pretty much the same as before, but here the move, it's a swap. So it's exactly the same as before. It's collecting the swaps here, but there is this extra thing here. So a move that we haven't recorded before. Aha, it's the location uh, at the end of um, where the element will, will eventually belong, that index. But it's really confusing. So I think that in this case, I would not record this move at all and uh, simply let the algorithm go without it. Let's save, refresh, and... So now you can see the elements are going all the way to their intended location here, to their correct location in the sorted list on the left. And there's not really a need here to show those comparisons. Okay, now this crazy one here. I have doubts about this really working because this is such a tailored animation here and it's made to really work with neighboring items there. So probably not gonna work as nice. 
but let's see. So the code here is probably a mess. This was not uh, scripted like the other uh, tutorials. It was uh, kind of coded on the fly. And um, the algorithm should be still separable, the sorting algorithm. But it's, uh, it's kind of a mess here compared to the other one, very many small things are considered. I don't really remember everything. Um, oh yeah, the, um, it's a variation of bubble sort because it moves from left to right and then from right to left and then back and forth and back and forth. Uh, I think this has a name, but I don't remember it now. Maybe I'm gonna edit it somewhere somewhere on the screen but yeah let's copy this monster and ask for the same thing can you implement insertion sort in this style Okay, it figured out that this is a little bit different uh, structure here. It's an object. It says the indices, but it also says if the swap, if it's a swap or comparison, um, not a true false like before. I don't know why I used this other structure. I think it's um, overly complicated, but um, I really don't remember. So, aha. Uh -huh. It's also trying to do something with um, insertion strategy. Let's see what comes from this. Copy. And paste it here. And instead of calling bubble sort, we're going to call insertion sort. And moment of truth. This doesn't really do anything different. It's pretty much same as bubble sort. So what did it do? It's just comparing nearby elements. So this is not insertion sort. Can you make it do insertion sort? This still looks like bubble sort. Okay. This looks, I think, better. Save and refresh. Okay, something crazy is happening. It's, uh, it is doing it. It is doing insertion sort, but um, something about it looks, looks uh, a little weird. I mean, of course the animation was made with bubble sort in mind, but um, let's have a look at the code. Uh -huh. There's also that comparison here also, the one that we removed in the previous implementation. Let's see what happens if we don't record this comparison. Save and refresh. Okay, it's definitely needed there 
for the added effect. So in this case, it's, it's actually helpful. Anyway, I'm impressed that it managed to do something here. Now let's try something more advanced. Let's try quick sort. And again, we're going to start with the basic one. So let's copy bubble sort again. Can you implement quick sort in this style? Okay, I'm not really surprised because these algorithms are really, really well documented everywhere. And the style really just means this extra thing about recording the swaps. But uh, still, it's really helpful because I don't need to do this myself. I can just look at the result and validate it. And most of the things are okay. The reason I didn't want to bother with the previous animation with the bird is the animation part of that code is so spaghetti because it was like improvised and just trying out different different things that I know it's very difficult to get into that and, and I don't want to. But let's see now with the simpler uh, animation. And I'm going to put this quick sort here instead of insertion sort. Let's save and refresh. And it broke. Um, okay, let's have a quick look. It's actually using the style from the from the wrong one. <laughs> uh, I think I think this is somehow not fair because I'm confusing ChatGPT with with too many styles. So I'm going to refresh this page and try again. Can you implement quick sort in this style? Okay, now this this looks better. It's also a different code structure than before. So let's replace this one what he proposed originally. Save and refresh. Wow, okay. Um, really hard to say from this visualizer. But the result is definitely sorted at the end. So. It's a, it looks like a valid sorting algorithm. And now let's have a look at the implementation. So there is the partitioning step here, the pivot. And uh, the functionality is working. It's definitely sorting something. I think I want to see what happens with the this animation. Maybe it's slower and we can get a better understanding of how the algorithm works from it. But it's not really as a good teaching tool as it was for the other two algorithms because quicksort is more involved and explaining it through this visualizer doesn't really work. It just shows the swaps that are happening and yeah, magic. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Now I'm going to take the bubble sort from this other implementation and ask, can you implement quick sort in this style? By this style, I, I just mean those uh, moves that are recorded really. So I, I really 
I'm surprised how it understands the changes and the differences there. Okay, wow, very many moves being recorded here. Oh, it even <laughs> records pivot uh, move. Interesting. This might break it because it's trying to do too much. Let's, uh, or let's see. Um, I think it might break it because swap doesn't exist in, in these moves that are happening there. So let's, let's see what we get here. I'm going to put it above insertion sort and let's call it here. Save and refresh. <laughs> Something jumped there, but um, yeah, there is some error happening and I quickly saw this issue. So swap needs to be there. Maybe let's just disable these moves where it wants to show the pivot somehow. So it assumes some things by itself and that's kind of interesting. But uh, maybe simple is better. So let's save this and refresh. Okay. No, it didn't work. Let's ask it again. Can you try again and record the all the swaps? Uh -huh. It actually created a, a function for swap <laughs> for, that does it and records it. Interesting. This makes the code easier here to understand, but the swap function does a little bit more than the name says. It also records these, these moves. It's fine because the function is inside the other one. So nice, uh, nice trick, but does it work? replacing, save and refresh. Yeah, this looks better. The this Pivoting action is a little bit clearer in this one. I would still not call it an educational software, but this is getting sorted and it works and it's a, a new visualizer. And yeah, this is, uh, I'm a little bit impressed with the quality of this one. But uh, let's try the ultimate monster here. Can it do something to this one? Uh, that even the insertion sort didn't look that great. I mean, it's it's working, it's sorting it properly, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But somehow the animation lacks. It's uh, it doesn't have the same personality as in the bubble sort. I'm not even telling it what the animation is doing, so it's kind of unfair. Uh, maybe I should paste the whole code. But I'm not going to bother with that. Can you implement it in this style, this other style? Okay. Let's put it here above insertion sort 
and now quelled. Quick sort here instead, save and refresh. is happening it's like <laughs> it's somehow moving things in in different parts and let's just say can you try again something is not Right. I can't even explain what is wrong. And of course, looking in the code, it's, it's not easy for me to do. And I don't want this video to be too long, just to see if it can be used to help with these things. Save and refresh. It's not doing anything. <laughs> I really don't know what is happening now. Oh my, it's, a, it's actually a combination of a swap and type. And I think I need to refresh the page again. It's getting confused. Can you implement quick sort in this style? I don't want this type pivot again. It's, it's again doing something complicated that I don't have support for. Can you not use the type Pivot only swaps are supported. Okay, hoping for the best. Save and refresh. I really don't know what is happening here. Is there some error or no? Hmm. Okay. I think this prompt worked for the other visualizer, so maybe it works here as well. Save and refresh. No. Let's try this. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to try to port the code from the other visualizer. Let's see. Save and refresh. No, something is it's just not working at all. Okay, but Let's see what happens if we take the code from the other visualizer, uh, this one too. So I'm just going to take this quick sort implementation 
and paste it here. But of course, the moves that are recorded now, these moves here that are recorded with the swap, uh, they need to be Oh no, I'm I overwrote bubble sort there. There are copies of, of quick sort happening now. Uh yeah, let's just remove the previous one and do my plan. So basically re uh, adapt this implementation from the second visualizer to the third visualizer. And the only difference is the type of moves that are recorded here. So it's a object with indices and type and they are just swaps. So this goes like that and uh, I and J here. Okay, no need for this one anymore. Let's see what happens. Save and refresh. <laughs> okay. Now the comparisons are missing. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, <laughs> the array gets sorted, but it's somehow like the bird is doing, doing magic here. <laughs> like somehow kind of vacuum cleaner going over the socks and my recording stopped here for some reason i don't know why it was looking all normal but the final video just doesn't contain the end what i still did was play more with the prompts and minor editing and the last visualizer now looks like this i'm quite happy with it for both insertion sort and quick sort you can get the final codes from here it asks you to make an account, but don't worry, I won't be spamming you with emails or anything like that. It's just a way to stay in touch if something ever happens to my YouTube channel. Anyway, ChatGPT was really useful. I was tired when coding this, and I'm sure doing everything myself would have been a challenge, especially quicksort. It was able to get many things right or quite close, so I was still acting as a kind of supervisor. I knew what was supposed to happen, so I was guiding it in the right direction. If you want to see me code the game where ChatGPT does most of the creative decisions, check this video out. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next year. Get it? Well, post next week, but it's still... No, no, no.